Have you ever wondered if saving your environment variables in a centralized place is possible? The answer is yes. Two services on AWS can handle this. The first one is AWS Secrets Manager, which is a service for securely saving your credentials like database credentials and API keys that can be rotated yearly. So you can easily rotate, manage and retrieve secrets throughout their life cycle. This is really good for use cases like when you have a database credentials like MySQL or Postgres, when you want to rotate the password once in a year. So AWS Secrets can do this for you. The second service is AWS Parameter Store, which provides secure, hierarchical storage for configuration data and secrets management. So for accessing AWS Parameter Store, you can search for Systems Manager in the search bar, Systems Manager, and then you will see this page. And then on the left side, you look for Application Management, and then here you will see the Parameter Store section. You will click here, and then you will have access to the Parameter Store page. So the two services are quite similar, but AWS Secrets is a bit more expensive and it is recommended for credentials that need to be rotated after some time, like database passwords. So for example, just like I said previously, if you have like a Postgres database or a MySQL database and then you want to rotate the password once in a year, then go for AWS Secrets. Otherwise, just go for Parameter Store that can solve your problem in a very efficient manner and in a really cost-effective way. And AWS Parameter Store is the service that we're going to discuss in this video for saving our credentials. Because previously, we created an SJS REST API that can communicate with ChatGPT and then we saved our environment variables in a .env file just like this one. We saved our API key and organization ID in a .env file, and then the code reads from the .env file. But now we're going to move these environment variables to AWS Parameter Store. But before we proceed, if you like this kind of video, just give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel so we can learn more about AWS services and NestJS. And don't forget about it, the more you learn, the better you become and more value you can provide. So let's do this. Okay, great. So what's the scenario that we have? Previously, we created the application that can communicate with OpenAI models. And then here on the service layer, we created two variables. The first one is the organization ID, which is an environment variable. And the second one is the OpenAI API key. And then we have to pass these two environment variables for using the OpenAI API. In our code, we were reading the environment variable from the .env file. And I also added some code in this application for deploying it into Elastic Beanstalk. And we have two environments here. The first one is the staging for testing. And the second one is the production version. This is what you usually have in a real scenario. And the production version is the one that we pass to our clients. So in both cases, what we have in the left side here in the in the environment variable section, we have the organization ID and the OpenAI API key. And for the production version, I also have this node ENV saying that this is the production version. This is only on the production version and I didn't do this on the staging. So what we're going to do, we're going to move these environment variables to a parameter store. So let's do this. Here on the on the systems manager, I'm going to parameter store. And then I'm going to create some parameters. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create four parameters. Two for staging or development and two for production. And let's do this. I'm going to do slash dev slash chat GPT slash organization ID. This is going to be the organization ID for open AI for staging. I'm going to save this as a regular string. And for demonstrating the regular string and the secure string for you. This is going to be a regular string. And let's create a parameter. I'm going to copy this to reuse the, the first and the second prefix. 
and the second one is going to be the open AI API key and this is the open AI API key for staging In this case I'm gonna save as a secure string to demonstrate this functionality to you you can pass a KMS key if you have one. If you don't have a KMS key, you can use the default key provided by AWS. And then we paste the value here. And you can see that this is, looks like a secure string because it's not showing every character to you. Let's create a parameter and let's do the same for production. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. But instead of def, I'm going to call it broad. And this is the OpenAI. API key for production. You don't have to pass a description. It's optional. So it's up to you. This is going to be a secure string just like the other case. And then I'm going to paste it here. Create a perimeter. Let's do the same for, for the organization ID. Create perimeter. Instead of dev, I'm going to call it broad. I'm going to keep the description empty for this case. It's up to you. And create parameter. Okay, perfect. Here I have the four parameters, two for staging and two for production. And then we're going to change the code to read from parameter store instead of reading from the .env files or environment variables from the machine. Now let's go to the code side. Okay, great. So here in the code side, the first thing that I'm going to do is to install the AWS SDK. So it's going to be yarn at AWS SDK. Okay, perfect. The second thing that I'm going to do is to create a new module on NestJS for holding the code, which is going to communicate with parameter store. So it's going to be nest G AWS parameter store. Oh, sorry, it should be nest G module AWS parameter store because we're creating the module for holding the code. So this is our new module. And now let's create the service layer service. So the second command was nest G service AWS parameter store. This is the module name and this is going to be the service on this module. So this is going to be the service layer, which is going to communicate with AWS parameter store. And this is going to be the class that we're going to inject into the chat GPT AI module. Okay, great. Now let's keep going on the service layer. What I'm going to do, I'm going to import everything as AWS from AWS SDK, which is the module that was installed previously. I'm going to define the library in the constructor. I'm going to define the variable here. It's going to be private read only SSM client because parameter store needs to be accessed from systems manager. So this is going to be a AWS.SSM, which stands for systems manager on AWS. And let's instantiate this, this variable. And here we need to pass the region for our application. In my case, since I'm using the Oregon region, which is the US West 2. So this is what I need to pass on the constructor. The region is going to be US West 2. Okay, perfect. Let's create a function for retrieving the parameter from parameter store. I'm going to say this is async get parameter. The first variable is going to be the parameter key. And let's do this return this dot SSM client dot get parameter. And the name is going to be the parameter key. Perfect. So here we have our basic service that communicates with parameter store. And this is the service that we're going to inject into our chat GPT service layer. For doing this, we also need to export the service layer here on the module. So it's going to be the parameter store service. 
is going to be exported from our module to be imported into another module. So here on our module, we're going to import the parameter store module, AWS parameter store module. Perfect. And so in our chat GPT AI service, we're going to inject the service that communicates with parameter store that we just created. So let's do this. On the constructor, I'm going to do a private read only parameter store service, which is an AWS parameter store service. Perfect. And the variable will be added as a variable into the service layer. Because if we do this, for example, this dot parameter store we can also retrieve the variable without defining it here in the class. Because we inject it using this definition in the constructor. So let's keep going. So I'm going to do some small changes here. Instead of defining the variable directly in the constructor, I'm going to do a lazy loading because for retrieving the parameters, it's a async parameter. And then we cannot do this on the constructor. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use the lazy loading strategy. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to say that this is, this can be undefined as well. So I'm going to remove this for now. And then I'm going to create a function for retrieving the OpenAI API. This is going to be private async get open AI API. And this returns a promise with the OpenAI API from OpenAI, OpenAI package. So if you don't have the OpenAI API defined in the class, let's instantiate it. So what we're going to do, we're going to read the OpenAI so the OpenAI API key, which is going to come from the parameter store service, and then we get the parameter. And the definition for it is going to be what we define in the parameter store dashboard while creating the variable. So the OpenAI API key is going to be this, this name. And we also need to do this for the organization ID. OpenAI organization ID. Okay, perfect. I also forgot something. Here we need to do the dot promise to convert this to a regular promise on JavaScript. So now we can act, we can actually read the value. So if the OpenAI API key dot parameter was not defined. What we're going to do, we're going to throw some exception, journal server error exception, saying that the OpenAI API key could not be retrieved. And I'm also going to do the same for the organization ID. Otherwise, we have both variables and then we can properly instantiate the OpenAI API. I'm going to do it just like we did before. I'm going to copy this and move to this function. Okay, perfect. So instead of reading from the dot yen, so from process.env, we're going to read from the parameter store that we just defined here. I'm going to do it this way. The organization is going to be organization.parameter.value and the API key is going to be this way, dot parameter dot value. Besides this, since we define the API key as a secure string, we need to do some small change to allow the code to read properly from parameter store. So here on our get parameter, I'm going to add another variable. I'm going to say is secure, which is a Boolean by default is false. What we need to do here, we need to say with decryption, 
is read from this variable. So if it's a secure string, then we pass true to this case. By default, it's going to be false. So we can properly decrypt the secure string variables just like we defined here for the OpenAI API key. Okay, perfect. So this way we can also read secure strings on parameter store properly in our code. And then we define the variable here, the OpenAI API. And if we already defined it, then we just return the OpenAI API. Perfect. Let's delete this. And then here in our list models and the get model answer, we're going to, instead of reading directly from the class, we're going to read from the function. So I'm going to do this const open AI API is going to be get open AI API. And then we read from this variable instead of read from the class directly. Okay, perfect. Now let's do the same for the get model answer. Instead of reading from the class, I'm going to read from this new variable, which comes from the function. Perfect. Now our code is reading the organization ID and the OpenAI API key from parameter store instead of reading from the .env files or the process .env from the machine. Okay, perfect. Let's test this out. I'm going to start the application locally. Okay, let's test this locally on Postman. I'm going to open up Postman. The application is running on port 3000. And this is the path to the list models, for example. Chat GPT AI. and the slash model for listing the models. Something went wrong, let me see what happened. Okay, so here on the service layer, I forgot to say that the OpenAI API key is a secure string, so I just need to pass true here. So when we try to read the OpenAI API key, Parameter store will decrypt the string for us and then we will turn the actual OpenAI API key instead of a protected string. So once we add the true parameter saying that this is a protected key, let's try again. I'm going to go back to the application here. Just to be sure, I'm going to rerun this. And let's try again. Okay, perfect. So now our code is reading the environment variables from parameter store instead of a .env file. So this is it. Now your application is reading the parameters from parameter store. On the next video, I'm going to show to you how you can restrict the access from the, from the parameter store for each environment. So because, for example, here on Elastic Beanstalk, we have two applications, one for staging and another for production. We're going to restrict the access from each environment. So the staging environment will only be able to access the staging variables and the production environment is going to be able to access anything. But if you prefer, you can also say that the production environment can only access the production of variables instead of reading everything. So this is what we're, what we're going to do in the next video. So if you like this kind of content, just give me a thumbs up share this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any doubt about the process, just ask me on the comment section and I will answer you. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next time.